my 2022 Hyundai Elantra Ad. If you're not a subscriber, welcome to the channel. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm dropping new videos. And to all my subscribers, thanks for coming back. So today, we're gonna be talking about my 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. It's been two years, almost two years since I purchased it, and I just hit 30,000 miles. So I figured it'd be a great time to do an update video. I'll go over all the stuff, and just to let you guys know, I am going to put chapters in this video. So look for those in the video. You can skip ahead. It doesn't bother me. Okay, let's talk about probably the number one reason why most have come to this video. I'm going to guess it's probably because they want to know how reliable this Hyundai Elantra N has been over the two years and 30,000 miles that I've owned it. So obviously, Hyundai kind of gets a bad rap, right? I mean, they're always going to be known as that manufacturer that used to make the Hyundai Accent and cars that were disposable and couldn't make it to 100,000 miles. Let's talk about how many times this car has left me stranded on the side of the road. It's broken down while I was driving it. Zero times. Never happened. Uh, never even gotten a check engine light in this car. Um, how many times have I gone to start it in the morning and I had a dead battery or the car didn't start because of something going on? Zero times. Never happened started every single time and has ran great so it's got to be something right um how much oil does it burn in between oil changes no oil um i check it religiously i've never seen the dipstick drop um, i've never seen any blue smoke come out of the tailpipes i've never burnt any oil it doesn't burn oil i've never i've only taken it to the dealer one time and that was for my initial complimentary oil change but it's never even been to the dealer after that so there's been no reason to but yeah reliability wise no complaints it's been amazing so there's that all right guys let's talk about the dealer experience slash uh, service so basically uh, the only time I brought the car to the dealership was right not right after I bought the car but when it was due for its first oil change so I brought the car in to the dealership that I bought it from and it wasn't a great experience. I made a video on this, so I'll link it up above. The car requires zero W30 oil, and it says it on the oil cap, it says it in the manual, but the dealership decided to put in zero W20. Um, this particular dealership said that it's acceptable to put in zero W20 or five W30. I actually would have been okay with the five W30, but the zero W20 wasn't gonna cut it for me. Way too light of an oil, in my opinion, for this engine that's, you know, it's a performance engine. And I did fight them on it, by the way. I didn't just let them get away with it. They wouldn't change it. They refused. They said that it's not going to avoid the war warranty. They're not going to do anything. So um, I or ordered oil and, uh, you know, oil came next day, emptied out the 0W20, put in 0W30. And since then, I've been doing my own oil changes. So I believe I've done seven oil changes on this car. I've only used uh, Penn's oil or Mobile One fuel efficiency 0W30 and the OEM Hyundai Kia um, oil filter. So yeah, it's only been to the dealership once. Like I said, it wasn't a great experience. What I will say is from making that video, what I learned is that all Hyundai dealerships not only you know function independently, but they're all just very different in uh, customer service and you know their, their service departments. Check out different dealerships. You might have to shop around for one. Um, in fact, the, another local dealership um, I called after my initial experience and they said we would absolutely put 0W30 in it. Brakes, I still have a ton of pad on the front and back. Um, so I'm not a super aggressive driver, so that makes sense. So yeah, that's really it. Service and, uh, and dealership experience, like I said, not great off the, off the bat, but I think if I did have to bring the car in for something else to a different dealership, it will probably will be a much better experience. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is the fuel efficiency of this car. So one of the main reasons I bought this car 
is because my Dodge Charger that I owned before, it was a 2009 Dodge Charger RT that I modified and, you know, put bigger gears and all that kind of stuff, but it got terrible gas mileage. I was lucky if I got 14 around town and on the highway, it, towards the end, it would struggle to get, even get 20 miles per gallon. I absolutely love that car, but I hated how much I was paying in gas. So one of the reasons why, like I said, I bought this car is for the fuel efficiency uh, of it. And I've been absolutely blown away with this car as far as that goes. I was expecting about 25 miles per gallon, but over the two years and 30,000 miles that I've owned the car, I've been averaging over 28 miles per gallon. And on the highway, it, it easily gets low 30s to mid 30s. You know, short drives and no traffic, almost 40 miles per gallon. So really, really impressive gas mileage. Now I do use 93 octane top tier gas stations from day one. For some people, they do complain about the size of the gas tank. I get it. You know, it's uh, I believe it's about a 13 gallon gas tank, but the most you'll ever really get in it is about 10, 11 gallons. Um, but it's kind of okay because you're not putting in as much gas. It's not as big a number when you're filling it up. But yeah, fuel efficiency wise, it's amazing. The eight speed DCT in this car is really, really great, especially in normal and eco modes. You know, it really keeps RPMs down and shifts up to the next gear quicker so that you, uh, you know, you get better gas mileage. Um, I do mostly drive my car in those, either one of those. I do put it in end mode, don't get me wrong. I love end mode and I have fun. I mean, every time I drive it, it goes in end mode at least once. Being that it is a four cylinder, it is extremely efficient. So I really, like I said, I, Really couldn't be happier as far as the gas mileage goes on this car. Um, it's exactly what I was looking for. I wanted a performance car that handled great, but still got great gas mileage. And this car's fit the bill perfectly for that. So let's talk about how this car does as far as a family car. I'm sitting behind myself at six foot three. I still have a little bit of room. Um, so a six foot three person sitting behind a six foot three person is pretty incredible for a compact car. We went on vacation recently to England and rented a BMW 5 Series, and I was shocked at the amount of room that it didn't have in the back. And I didn't think it was possible, but I got home and I looked up the specs of the interior of a BMW 5 Series, specifically the 530e is the one that we rented in England, and it actually has less front leg room, less rear leg room than the Elantra N which is crazy. Um, I was actually considering the M340i as the next car. The 5 Series is smaller than this. There's no way a 3 Series is going to work. So yes, this makes an excellent family car. Um, I fit my mountain bike, uh, extra large frame, full suspension mountain bike in the back. Of course, I take off the front wheel and I put these seats down. And there is a strut bar, but I can you know move the forks over the strut bar. Now, there are no amenities back here. There's no vents. There's no USB. Um, gosh, even the door panels are hard plastic and not padded. So there are no amenities whatsoever, but my kids are good and they don't complain about it. And they didn't really have that in the charger anyways. The charger did have vents in the back, but no USB, um, anything like that. All right, so now we've gotten to how is the car hold, held up as far as wear and tear goes? I think this car still looks pretty brand new to me um, but we will go over the things that have kind of gone wrong with it um, as far as wear and tear so let's start at the front this is pretty much what happens with all new cars nowadays because they use water-based paint but you know i have my fair share of rock chips um, in the front you can see here but overall not too bad this front Red little stripe at the bottom has some, you know, some little marks on it. But, you know, from a little bit of distance, you can't tell at all. But I will be doing a video of a Dr. Color Chip kit that I bought to fill in some of those little nicks and rock chips. So keep an eye out for that. Now that the weather is warmed up, I can do that. Uh, I bought it in the winter time. It was, you know, you want to wait until the temperature is warm enough. There's a rock chip in the windshield. You'll see here, little chip there. Not too bad overall, no big cracks or anything like that. Something else that I did have happen is I, one day I just noticed this 
and I don't know where it came from. So something or someone scraped the side of the car right there. So again, that's going to be a Dr. Color Chip touch up. So, you know, there's a little scratch over here. Not too bad. But overall, the car looks still brand new to me. So nothing major, no issues there. Now let's move to the interior. These door cards, hard plastic. And so there's a scratch here. I don't even know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. That's almost from day one that was there. Um, this bottom plastic is really hard and scratchy and easy to scratch. So there's that. You can see here this <laughs> where you can see where I leave my elbow. This is padded, but it's very, very light padding. So I always know where to put my elbow. But yeah, that's unfortunately uh, that is just kind of dented in and probably going to stay like that forever. The seats look like they did when I bought it. No wrinkles or anything on this seat. The passenger side has like some wrinkling on the side there, but not too bad. We have this piano black plastic, which gets a little bit scratched, but actually it's held up really good. The one that does get scratched the most is this HVAC screen here. So there's some scratches on here. It really is kind of like only when the light hits it a certain way. So it's not bad. Uh, the screens have all held up perfect. Nothing there. You know, there's some light scratches on the piano black here too with the weird dust star thing going on there that actually is just where I put my phone mount. But otherwise, the only other issues I have are on the door card on the passenger side. My son sits up here when I take him to school and he has his backpack with a zipper and a lock on it and then his instrument case and he's just bashed up. <laughs> he's bashed up the side of it. He's probably going to watch this video and uh, hey buddy, I still love you. I still love you even though you've done this to my car. This is just part of the uh, being a daily driver and being a family car. So uh, you can see him back there, you know, with the kids sitting in the seats, there's, it looks fine. You know, no tears in the seat or anything like that. And the door cards in the back are fine. Um, actually, one of them, I think there's a scratch back here that I did with my mountain bike when I was putting it in the back. So, you know, it's going to happen. Steering wheel is held up absolutely great. I have scratched it very lightly with my ring. I can't even see where it is, but it was one of those where I heard it. It was like, <sighs> and uh, I saw it, but it's actually smoothed out. So I don't know if that's just the nature of this particular leather or leather in general, um, but it uh, it's smoothed out and you can't even see where that scratch is. So overall, this, uh, this has held up really, really well. So yeah, uh, wear and tear wise, all the things you would normally expect after two years and 30,000 miles, but I'm really happy with how well it's held up and uh, no complaints there. All right, let's talk about modifications. So I actually haven't done very many modifications to it, but we'll talk about the stuff that I have done. And the first and most obvious thing is these wheels. So the Elantra N comes with 19 inch wheels from the factory. They're kind of a silver, like a machined silver black and they comes with Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are incredible summer tires, but they're summer only. Really, you don't want to run summer only tires when it gets below 40 degrees. So what I did is I have these Sport Edition 18 inch wheels from Tire Rack, and I have Continental DWS 06 Plus tires. But going down to the 18s, uh, you get a little bit better ride quality. They look great, and I can drive them all year round. So they've worked out really, really well. Uh, the other thing on the outside you'll notice is, of course, tint, 20% uh, all around uh, ceramic, and tint always makes the car look better, of course. Other mods on the outside, we have the 2024 flat Hyundai badges. We got one in the front. We have the matching one in the back. You can see there. Love the way that these look. One of my favorite things from the facelift Elantra N is those badges. I have this black N badge there, which I would love to get a flat one, so I'm working on that. Um, otherwise, I debadged the Elantra uh, letters that would be on the back there, which really cleans it up. Other mod is these vinyl inlays on the end there. So that red side skirt is just red. It's kind of like 3D embossed where that N logo is and the uh, white vinyl inlay there just really looks cool let's go to the inside so interior wise pretty much all stock um, the only things that i have modified are i got the alcantara korean market 
armrest there. The stock one is just this really cheap looking plastic rubber armrest, not comfortable and looks like crap. So this one really cleans it up, makes it look nice. The other thing I did is I added the Alcantara shift boot there. It's still the stock leather shift knob, but I added the shift boot, which uh, I think looks fantastic. I have a wireless dongle for my Apple CarPlay and I have this quad lock mount for my phone. But that's it. Not a lot that I really wanted to do on the inside because I just love the way it looks already. Now let's move under the hood. The most obvious thing here is obviously the forge intake. So we have the forge, cold air, which is not, <laughs> intake, and turbo inlet. And that's the inlet right there. This thing's amazing. Uh, the sound of it is incredible. I love it. I would not change it for the world. The only thing I might do is wrap it with the gold wrap that they give you. I didn't do that initially because I just was going for more of a stealth look, but this obviously doesn't look stock. So um, try to keep the temperatures down in the intake tube itself. There's a gold wrap tape that they give you. So I'm going to probably be wrapping that. I will uh, make a video on that for you guys to show you how I do it to make it look neat and clean. Uh, the other mod in here is you can see the oil catch can, which I've had on since 6,000 miles. It's worked great catches the oil vapors that would normally would get recirculated into the intake. So I'm hundred percent happy with that. Love the way it looks. Only other modification I've done as far as the drivetrain goes is one you can't see. And that is a lower rear engine mount bushing upgrade. So the ones that come with the car are way too, way too forgiving. Um, and that is what creates the wheel hop on this car. So I have PowerFlex purple, bushings in, uh, in the lower engine, rear engine mount, and that has completely solved the wheel hop issue. But that's it, guys. That's all the modifications that I've done to the car. And I feel like it's so perfect right now for the what it is. Um, with that said, of course I would like more power. <laughs> so I think eventually I'm probably going to do an ECU tune. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do like where, you know, it's a spare ECU and I just take this one out and put a new one in or if I do like where you flash it. Um, I haven't 100% decided on that, but I will definitely, definitely make a video for you guys if I do that. Part of that will be also uh, upgrading the fuel pump, uh, the high pressure fuel pump, which lies underneath this engine cover and probably the injectors too. Uh, both of those are upgraded um, using OEM Hyundai Sonata uh, parts. So the Sonata N-Line, uh, you use the injectors and the fuel pump from that, and that prevents any fuel cut um, using a, a tune. So, all right guys, so that's it for mods. If you have any suggestions on other mods you think I should do, let me know. Um, I've thought about lowering springs, but it's already pretty low from the factory. And I like the fact that I don't scrape all the time, but, um, and I've even thought about doing like a, a lip spoiler instead of the Lamborghini style one <laughs> that's on this car, but I do like it. Don't get me wrong. I do like the spoiler, but man, it would look really nice with a lip spoiler. And so it almost looked like a fastback more. Let me know what you guys think about that. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about fun factor. We're going to talk about how fun is this car? Um, is it going to keep you entertained? Let me know. <laughs> there is nothing that this car from the factory, you know, is lacking. I feel like it's the perfect balance of power and handling and, you know, just the sound of the exhaust, the quick shifting of the DCT, the, the screens, you know, with all the info, um, the customization, everything combined just makes this car so much fun. So much fun that I just look for reasons to go on errands. I look for reasons to, you know, go for a drive. This car was developed by someone who is responsible for the M cars. All the Honda haters can laugh at me all they want, but it's true. And you know, you can really, you can feel that in this car. The steering is really great, really precise. Um, the suspension handling is incredible, but still soaks up the bumps really well. The sound coming from back there is just, you're not gonna find anything in the $35,000 price point that's gonna come close 
to the pops and bangs and burbles. And once I added the forge intake, I do really love, I do love the sound of the intake, the, you know, the turbo spool, spooling and um, that whistle kind of blow off sound. that I will just rip it from a, from a launch and my I just say to myself, oh my gosh, this car is so good. So fun factor wise, I think it's obvious. You can see the crit on my face. This car does it all for me. It's so much fun. And then when I want to chill, you just hit the end, other end button and the exhaust completely quiets up, it shifts gears quicker to make it feel more fuel efficient and make it quiet you know this is an economy car but overall it's got a pretty quiet interior now i'm coming from a charger and an accord so i'm not coming from luxury cars but this car is probably a lot quieter and more comfortable um, than you might think the suspension soft the steering's easy it's quiet it's comfortable it just yeah it's your family car and it's your weekend car and you can just go back and forth and have a good time. I want my weekend car. End mode. Boom. Nail it. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Fun factor. 100%. A plus. Um, it's just a blast. In conclusion and kind of wrapping up, you know, this review, the two year 30,000 mile review of my 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. I guess the biggest question is, am I still happy with my purchase? Am I happy that I bought this car? 100% I am. Um, you know, there were some concerns when I first got it, these seats being one of them. They are tight. They're heavily bolstered. Um, but the great thing about these is they do break in. And I'm so happy that they did. I can tell you after, you know, two years and 30,000 miles, I can take this car across country right now and I wouldn't be worried about the seat comfort. Everything about this car just, it feels special to me. And I know that, you know, people always kind of make fun of Hyundai, especially, you know, some of my videos just, I get all kinds of Hyundai trolls, you know, haters and stuff. And I get it. Like, I totally get it. When I first was looking at this car, I seriously, seriously had to do some deep introspective thinking Am I going to be okay with owning a Hyundai? I'm a car guy. Can I, will I be okay explaining to people why I bought a $35,000 Ohancha? <laughs> and a hundred percent, I can say that I don't have any hesitations in saying I did, I absolutely made the right choice. Hyundai really just, you know, there's a reason why they're winning TCR for, you know, the past however many years. Um, they, they know how to make race cars and they know what, enthusiasts want i love the transmission the dct is incredible i love the fact that i still have paddles so if i want to shift through the gears i can and hold the gears i love that it'll hold red line and bounce off the rev limiter it won't shift for you it's it's crazy because um a lot of my past cars i just spent every waking moment thinking about what not modification can i do next how can i make it sound better how can i make it break better and this car is so amazing the way it comes from the factory and I don't spend every waking moment thinking about how I can improve it because it is so good out of the box. Really, as long as you're not a bad snob and you have to have this or that, um, I can't imagine this car disappointing you. It is, it's amazing. So with that guys, I'm gonna conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking this video. I really do appreciate it. Just sincerely thank you. I really do appreciate it. So. If you have any questions or comments, of course, leave them in the comment section. And till the next video, peace out.